I wasn't really expecting to make a new video anytime soon given the state of my homework, but Anytype just released a new version, and even though I have other videos in the works, I decided that this was pretty important to get you guys, so here we are. Anytype just released version 1.30, 1. 1. point something or other, I'm not sure. Anyway, Anytype just released a new update version, and with it comes multiple spaces and a calendar view as the main two components. So today I wanted to take some time to show those to you, talk about what they might be used for, and then discuss what's next on the horizon. Let's start with multiple spaces, because I think that this is really cool, especially for somebody like me who needs to completely rework my vault every time I want to make a video, because I need to make a showcase for something that perhaps I'm not using in the way that it could be used. You know, there's lots of potentials, and I don't necessarily construct all of those naturally, so I need to fabricate some things to display to you what options are. Multiple spaces makes that really simple. It basically says that you can have multiple vaults. This is great. So basically all you need to do is go down here, click on your name, and then click on a new space. Now you can see you've got a second one. I'll open that one up later. But when you hit this button, it asks you, you can select an image, you can give it a name, and then you can create it. And it basically is just a completely new vault, a completely new workspace. It gives you your default sets because they like to give these to you in case you don't understand how anything works. It resets your library, I believe, maybe not. Let's test. Yes, it does re reset your library because I made that relation in a different one. So it looks like it resets basically all of the information in your vault. This is a completely new vault or I guess space as we're calling it. So this is really great. I don't think there's any connection between these two. So if you wanted to have one for work, if you wanted, and then one for, you know, homework or one for learning, you could very easily separate out your ideas like this. And I think that this is wonderful because one of my main complaints about the primary any type setup is that you get a lot of types and relations that start contradicting each other or seeming to overlap and it's really hard to keep track of them all. So being able to just completely separate that them out into their own spaces can be really valuable. However, it can also be really problematic if you're one of those people who really likes to link their ideas or link their thinking, if you will, because you're not gonna be able to take an idea from one vault or one space and put it in another one. So it's a little counterintuitive from that approach I'd be interested to see if there's an option for having them sync or having them connect. But for now, having this as a possibility, I don't see it as a downside. I mean, if you want your all of your ideas to link, then you can just keep them all in the same space. If you want to separate things out or just have one space that is completely devoted to a specific topic, now you have the opportunity. More opportunities is always good. One funny thing that I have found is that they show up here in the sidebar of everything. So maybe they're stored as objects. When you hit them, they don't do anything. They don't take you to your other space. They're just they're just here. Maybe they're on the graph view. It doesn't even look like they're on yeah, they're not even on the graph view. So they're just they're just here on the side. Not really sure why. Maybe they'll fix that eventually, but I think that's kind of funny. But the main attraction of this update, at least for me, is the calendar view. So if we go into this space, I've already set one up because I was playing around with this because me figuring things out live on camera really doesn't work out well and then I have to edit out large portions of the video. So this basically gives you the option to see a collection with a calendar view. So up here, you can change the view from grid to calendar. Now, I guess I'm gonna just show it to you. This is kind of finicky to figure out at first. Here's how it works. So everything that's in this collection, every object that you make, as long as it has a, well, it's not here now, a date, some form of date that is a relation on it. I like to start so I can see it up here. For some reason, I can't get it to naturally appear here because I had it start on this one and it wasn't start here. But either way, as long as it has a date, then what you're able to do with it, I don't want to type too much because the microphone on my Mac is right next to the keyboard. Anyway, once it has this date, it will then show up on that date on your calendar. Right now, I've had it set to this event date uh, relation that I've made, but by default, it's going to come with the creation date or last modified date. It's going to come with one of these. So right here under the view choice, if you're on calendar, you can change what date relation it will sort itself based off of. If you make a new relation and set the relation type to date, then it will choose that one. So for example, if I wanted to create a new object and 
under the types, I would create a, or under the relations, I'd create a new relation. We'll call this one date two, or dat two, I guess we're gonna go with that. Then I select the relation type date here. And once I select it there, then it's an option on the calendar view to sort by. It'll show up as one of one of these guys right here. That's how I got my custom relation event date to show up. Now, at first glance, I think this is pretty cool because you can open everything off of the calendar and look at it. You can, you could, you know, this one's not opening. There we go. You, so you can interact with it like a calendar, like you'd expect. Um, I haven't messed around with, okay, so you can easily select the months, the years, that sort of thing. It seems pretty cool. The one thing that I think is holding it back is the fact that it's based off, of, <clears throat> excuse me. The one thing that I think is holding it back is the fact that it is based off of collections. I don't think collections work well. I don't like them. They are kind of clunky. I think that it's really hard to add things to the collection. So it's pretty easy to hit new object from here, but if I make a new object somewhere else, I have to go in and link it to this collection. It works, but it's not, it's not smooth. It's not streamlined. And the fact that I believe calendar view only works on collections and not on sets makes it kind of a pain. So again, I think this is a great upgrade. I think this is a wonderful direction for them to be taking, and it's a great option to have. I'm not going to ever complain about having more features. Well, at some point I will, but this is not that day. However, I don't know if this is the best way to implement this. I understand that it's probably hard to figure out how you want to implement it, given the way that any type is pretty unique from every other note-taking software out there, but I'm a little bit hesitant to imagine that I would use this all the time. We'll see, I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna give it a try because having a calendar view is kind of great and is another step towards making this more of a all-in-one kind of app. So yeah, that's this most recent update. I'm still waiting because I believe somewhere on their website they said they're working on collaborative docs or what they called quote-unquote multiplayer docs. I don't really know why they called it that. Being able to share and work on the same note with multiple people would be amazing, and I would almost certainly switch to this as my primary note-taking system. So I'm waiting for that. That's on the horizon. But for now, this is what we have in the update. Let me know what you think about it, and I will see you all in the next video.